in this film, we will attempt to help you get oriented again to the brain, but now we've cut the brain in half. So we are looking at the right hemisphere, and we have cut a huge bundle, a colossal bundle, you might say, of fibers that interconnect the two cerebral hemispheres. That, of course, is the corpus callosum. And so the corpus callosum ends back here in the splenium, or tail, whereas after the body, throughout much of the hemisphere, we come to a bend, which is the genu of the corpus callosum. And that is towards the front end of the brain. So here we have the frontal pole on this right hemisphere. Another structure that many students use to identify what's towards the front end of the brain is down here on the brain stem, where they look at the basilar pons, an enlarged part of the pons here, that also points towards the front end of the uh, head. Now, we can see a, a number of gyri here and the first I wish to point out is the cingulate gyrus that sweeps around the corpus callosum and back towards the splenium where it will become continuous with the parahippocampal gyrus that we identify on the medial side of the temporal lobe. The colossal sulcus separates the cingulate gyrus from the corpus callosum, and a number of branches of the anterior cerebral artery were removed from the colossal sulcus. Other arteries will run in the cingulate sulcus that runs uh, quite continuously in this brain before it sweeps up in the marginal sulcus here. Uh, now, the gyrus that is above the cingulate sulcus, then, is the superior frontal gyrus. So we had quite a bit of superior frontal gyrus on the lateral surface, and here as well on the medial surface. The cingulate sulcus, as it comes up in this marginal sulcus, comes up behind the central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus, which you can see on this specimen, and usually is the case, does not sweep over uh, very substantially onto the medial edge. And that means that this is the continuation of the post-central gyrus. This is the continuation of the pre-central gyrus. That is, post-central is somatosensory. And what part of the homunculus did we say was represented on the medial side of the hemisphere for the post-central gyrus was the lower extremity. And it's the same for the pre-central gyrus, the motor strip. It's the lower extremity that's represented on the medial side here. So sometimes we'll refer to this collection of the pre- and post-central gyri on the medial surface as the paracentral lobule. So the paracentral lobule is defined posteriorly by the marginal branch of the cingulate sulcus. Now behind that, uh, the central sulcus then, would be the parietal lobe, and on this medial surface we have a very substantial fissure that's very deep that separates parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. So this area of the parietal lobe is called the precuneus. It's referring, in fact, to the cuneus, which is a, a triangular-shaped gyrus, cuneiform gyrus, on the occipital lobe. So the gyrus cuneus, and the precuneus, which is parietal. On the 
uh, continuing then with the occipital lobe, we have the, not only the parieto occipital fissure, but we have a, 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 a calcarine fissure. The calcarine fissure then is running uh, more horizontally and separates the lingual gyrus here from the cuneus. This is our primary visual cortex. Uh, most of it in the depths of the calcarine fissure and coming out somewhat on the medial surface of the hemisphere. The part of the image from the fovea for which we have the greatest detail is displaced most towards the occipital pole so that the uh, fovea has a very large representation on the primary visual cortex, while the lateral visual field, the peripheral visual field, will have a somewhat smaller portion in comparison with its distribution on the uh, retina. Now, those are the major things that we wish to identify on the hemisphere here on the medial surface, but there are a number of structures that we might pick up from uh, that are down uh, below the corpus callosum. So the first I would point out is a thin septum that's suspended from the corpus callosum, and that's the septum pellucidum. And at the ventral edge of the septum pellucidum is a large fiber tract. This fiber tract is the fornix. Now below the uh, fornix coming down here behind the anterior commissure and below that the lamina terminalis the front end of the embryological brain, we see here the optic chiasm cut in half. Now on this specimen, we can see a little bit of the third ventricle. It's a slit of a ventricle, and in some of your specimens it will appear quite large because of cellular degeneration. We can see some of the limits of the third ventricle then. Above the optic chiasm is a chiasmatic recess. There would be a small continuation of the ventricle into the stalk of the pituitary, thus giving it the shape of a funnel, or as we called it, the infundibulum. In the wall of the third ventricle, you can see the hypothalamic sulcus leading us back towards the cerebral aqueduct. So from the hypothalamic sulcus on down is our hypothalamus. Above the hypothalamic sulcus is the dorsal thalamus, which we generally just refer to as thalamus. And this particular brain did not have a massa intermedia, or interthalamic adhesion. So we do not see that connection here. Above, uh, on the, the uh, dorsal and medial surface of the third ventricle, uh, we can see the stria medullaris, fibers coming back towards the habenular nuclei which are so small that they're generally very difficult to find. And that leads us back as well to the posterior commissure. The posterior commissure then interconnects structures entirely within the brainstem down here in the midbrain. And it's not part of the connection, interconnections between the two cerebral hemispheres. So from the posterior commissure to the back of the mammillary bodies would be the posterior limit 
of the hypothalamus. And behind that is going to be the brainstem. Uh, so first we can see the cerebral aqueduct very nicely as this was cut. And above that we'll find a superior colliculus, which will turn out just a little bit here, a superior colliculus, and an inferior colliculus. So the superior colliculus is a visual a reflex center, and the inferior colliculus it an, is an auditory relay center. Below the ventricular system, that is here the cerebral aqueduct, and here the floor of the fourth ventricle, would be the tegmentum. The tegmentum then is not only in the midbrain, but also found in the pons, above basilar pons, and continuing into the medulla, back this way. We only find tectum in the midbrain, the superior and the inferior colliculi. Now I would like to uh, pick up the other half of this brain because we got the entire septum pellucidum here on the right hand side. So as I bring in the other brain, it will not have the septum pellucidum blocking our view. Here's the left hemisphere. And in the left hemisphere now, this is frontal lobe. Remember, it's kind of a rounded ending versus the occipital pole which is somewhat more pointed. Now we can see those similar structures that we identified on the other half of the brain, but we can also look into the lateral ventricle. And one of the things we see very prominently is the head of the caudate nucleus. Now the head of the caudate nucleus is in front of the diencephalon. Here's thalamus, diencephalon. This is where this is where the interventricular foramen was. So the head of the caudate is in front of that and the thalamus is behind it. And one of the structures we can see clearly on this thalamus is a bump at the front end. This bump, then, is the anterior thalamic tubercle. And peculiarly enough, contains the anterior thalamic nuclei. At the back of the thalamus, overlying the superior colliculus, is another very large nucleus in the human brain thalamus and that is the pulvinar. So we see two nuclei on this gross specimen that are very prominent even on uh, a gross appearance and without any special staining. Good luck in your studies.